I think people forget that athletes are like people. It is all about your performance and your training and whether you've got an injury and you're always like critiquing yourself because people just see the performance, they don't see everything that goes on behind the scenes and even your, like your team that work with you and support you every day, but also like your family life and your home life. Most of our media work's normally done straight after we've finished a race and you're either really happy or you feel horrendous. <laughs> um, so they always catch you either on like a really, you know, positive thing about your performance or like you're feeling really down about something that's never, it's never really about you as a person. So it's great to have that opportunity to talk about me as Libby, not just me as an athlete. I'm Libby Clegg, I am a T11 100 and 200 meter sprinter. Running to me makes me feel really empowered and free. It means so much because it's, it's challenged me, it's pushed my boundaries, um, it's given me a level of independence, confidence. Uh, especially when I run with my guide runner, it just is a, we run in sync and in rhythm with one another. So. Um, it just makes me feel like we're one person and I just really love it. I mean, I've been doing it long enough now. <laughs> if I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it this long. <laughs> Winning in Rio was an absolute dream come true. It was the pinnacle of my career. It's everything that I ever wanted and I'd worked my entire career up until that point to be a Paralympic gold medalist, let alone a double Paralympic gold medalist. Shortly after then, um, I had a bit of time off and, you know, really struggled with my mental health because I kind of didn't know who I was outside of the track and I knew who I was as an athlete but not as a person and I was very unprepared for how I was going to feel. It was a rough few years. Mentally keeping well is really, really important. And for me, that is having other things going on outside just training and track life and competing. And for me, my biggest distraction outside of training is my little boy, Edward. But when I first found out I was pregnant, a lot of people were quite concerned about how I was going to, going to be able to parent. I don't feel like my disability affects me at all really as being a parent. I think it just takes me a little bit longer to do things sometimes and I've maybe got a different way of doing things than maybe other people. I problem solve on a daily basis, like just the fact that I can't see very well so I'm always having to come up with different ways to do things and having my son was just like another little challenge. Um, but there's not really anything that I've ever come across um, that I don't think other parents that you know, don't have a disability, worry about. I think it's the same concerns and worries that all parents have, regardless of whether you've got a disability or not. There's lots of ways of getting around things. This is a level indicator. I use this um, when I make a, a hot drink, so you put it on over the edge of your cup, and when the kettle boils, um, you put your water in the cup, and it beeps when you've got enough water in, like the washing machine, for example, I remember exactly um, where specific um, things are and what they are. So, um, like a normal person, you have to memorise it. Like, I don't know, nine o'clock is like a white wash or whatever. <laughs> I've got to remember those things. It's just not what normal people have to do. Um, even stuff like where I put things in the, in the kitchen, I, I know where everything is, so I know what's in every drawer. Parenting is changed my life completely <laughs> um, you know you don't have a line anymore and you're on somebody else's schedule the whole time <laughs> um, which can be really interesting because athletes are very much like about their routine and you know it's like a process to each day whereas when you have a child that does not happen anymore they do dictate what time you go to bed when you get up and I just think my lifestyle's changed in that sense and um, but it kind of makes you more focused and have less distractions. I think if I could ins inspire Edward in 
in one way it would be that even though myself and Dan can't see very well we just get on and do things every day that we possibly can do and we face every challenge and just get get on with it and I think if that could be something that he could learn from us that would be fantastic because we don't really let our disability get in the way of living our life. You know, we talk about women in sport and, you know, not many women choose to have children because they know that it potentially could affect their career. And I, to I totally get that. But for me, it was just so important that, you know, I really wanted to start a family and I didn't want to wait till the end of my career. And I wanted to just be able to prove that you could have a baby and then come back and, you know, still compete at the same level that you, you did before. And I'd like to, I'd like to think I'd prove <laughs> proven that point. And you know, any other women out there that are thinking about having kids during their sporting careers, I'd, I'd say go for it. Because even though it can be really difficult at times, it, um, it just brings so much happiness to my life that I never thought I like, really imaginable, to be honest.